What first seemed to be a disqualified ABC correction in Bitcoin has now resurrected and looks more dangerous than ever. A lot has happened since last week. Upon this 5-wave count that disqualified our prospect B-wave on Friday, I spent the weekend and most of the week so far to get my head around what's going on. Initially upon messing up our technical roadmap on Friday, I actually sighed out loud. My big thesis was nullified, I was in pain, I slept bad, not joking by the way, I slept bad, I slept on it, dreamt about it, and after one too many hours of intense chart studies and sleep meditation and sleep deprivation, it eventually dawned on me. The zigzag was never dead, it just pretended to be, or so I tell myself at least, for I was the one who misread it. Simply put, it was a misjudgment on my part and I take full responsibility for it. Luckily though, the error was swiftly rectified and regardless of what, all Bitcoin related positions would have been released in this region anyway. For right now, the bearish beast towards the low 20,000s is more alive than ever. To further strengthen my case and to guarantee its legitimacy, I have run this through in detail with some very renowned Elliott Wave theorists to confirm my thesis and get additional inputs and feedback. For this reason, before commencing the actual episode, I want to give special thanks to Anders and Toby for their insightful help and feedback, for they sure brought light and clarity. With that said, there is an important crossroads ahead, for if the price were to develop in certain ways, the zigzag thesis may ultimately be disqualified altogether, in exchange for a much more complicated correction. Yet this wouldn't mean that it's free reign up ahead, quite the opposite. And according to Elliot Anders, such correction could very well take the shape of a new marginal all-time high before coming down like a monsoon again. But until proven otherwise, we have strong calls to follow the zigzag route ahead, and in this episode we will bring full clarity as to why. On a different note, over the last year and a half, people have requested me to launch a paid service, a private signal service group. And I am pleased to say that within a very foreseeable future, as in very, very, that is now happening. So keep your eyes out on this channel as I'll announce it soon, for this is nothing like anything out there. This is big and despite my closest friends saying that I'm dead on the inside, jokingly of course, at least so I hope, I am very excited about this. And chances are you will be too when this is all unveiled. And again, I cannot stress many times enough that nothing in this episode constitutes financial advice. But if, on the other hand, this episode would happen to increase your understanding of Bitcoin's path ahead, then please return the favor by hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Let's now pay a visit to that furious bear again and see how it's doing. Upon analyzing this 5-wave structure, it finally dawned on me that neither of these rising wedges are a 5-wave impulse. It's an ending diagonal, which was later confirmed by the Elliott Wizzes. Now, there are several correct ways to count the A and B waves, and we're not gonna get into detail about them, for they all lead to the same outcome, that this here is a B wave. Some may protest that this could in fact be a leading diagonal, as in the first wave out of a 5-wave impulse. But to those of you, I have to disagree for two reasons. First of all, the declining trading volumes are textbook corrective in their nature. Secondly, the 5-wave count of the A-wave is much too obvious. For when it comes to Elliott wave theory, one must have a very good cause to go with any route other than the obvious one. And this A wave here is as obvious as they get. And my point with this is that the Elliott wave theory gurus, Frost and Prechter themselves, clearly state in their book, as mentioned in the previous episode, that whenever you encounter a 5 wave count against the prevailing trend, you should expect further downside to follow. And that is exactly what we're seeing right now. 
Moreover, everything I said in the previous episode still stands. This rally is much too hyped up and fueled by greed. Now, whether Bitcoin's B wave has topped out or not is too early to tell, for depending on how we count the ending diagonal, it is either technically over with or it should have another pump to go. With that said, three things that do speak in favor of Bitcoin having topped out its B wave are 1. Is Golden Ratio 618 Fib rejection up on the recent peak? 2. The upper bearish blue closing on the 4 hour chart, just a mere 1.25% away from the absolute peak. And 3. The RSI on the weekly closed its last candle on the upper bearish blue, and this here in particular does indeed spell trouble. It's a warning sign that anyone who values their money should take seriously. Again, whether this was the B-Wave peak or if there's another one slightly higher in coming is irrelevant, especially to those of us who have sold off the entirety of our marathon positions already. For entering longs now is like placing a deaf guy to pick pennies off the rails. Once the prospect C-Wave is to be initiated, we're again talking technical targets in the low 20,000s. And the beautiful part of such steep plunge is that Bitcoin, counter to what many people may think will still be bullish and here's why. Starting on the weekly chart, there are a few highly relevant observations, things that come together in the most beautiful way. First of all, the 21 simple moving average is a central one for the weekly chart. If we go back historically in Bitcoin, we can tell that this moving average provides us with significant reliability. Both during the 2013 markup, but even more so in the 2017 one, the price literally licked its way up towards new all-time highs on this very line. And only once out of the 30 or so candle bar touches did it week notably below it amidst the 2017 markup. And not on a single occasion during the same time did the price close below it. Now, based on this moving average reliability, how then has the price reacted thus far into this markup? Given that this market cycles markup began in July last year, more on that in a bit, the price has made one lousy touch, albeit with five straight weekly candles. After that, the price has effortlessly flung both below it and now back above it again. And what does this tell us? What's the deal with airplane food? Wrong channel, my apologies. So what's the deal with airplane food? Why is it so expensive? It's not gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> now, what does it mean when the price of any underlying flicks back and forth between moving averages, EMA ribbons, Ichimoku clouds and what have you? To those of you who have followed this channel for some time now, I propose you pause and take a moment to figure it out yourselves. Right, let's spoil it. Here's the answer. Whenever the price fluctuates jauntily between moving averages and overall lagging overlay indicators, it's a certain giveaway that the price is in the midst of a formation creation or a sideways range. And this to me is further technical proof that we're not ready for new impulses. For based on this alone, I do not for a second believe Bitcoin is ready to just sail off and away. With that said, I will still remain technically bullish in the mid to long term, even if it were to take a deep dive. Bitcoin's primary trend line currently stands at 20,000 sharp. This trend line is an internal one, meaning it is based on the areas of most reversal action, as opposed to an external one, like this. For as you can see, it ignores the corona crash as a lone outlier. Now, as the A and C waves of an ABC correction statistically tend to be of equal measure, we can again conclude that this would perfectly match the primary trend line to a T. For granted that it will take the C wave some time to actually get there, it should neatly align with the primary line. But here's where things get truly beautiful and what most people and analysts have gotten all wrong and how it all connects. If we really zoom out on Bitcoin, we can identify some rather interesting things. I'm talking about this big fourth wave. 
Now, the first wave is indisputable. I haven't to date come across a single Elliot technician who argues its obviousness and validity. And the same goes for the second and third waves. It is the fourth wave in which the opinions diverge. Most people count this as an ABC, starting from the December 2017 all-time high and bottoming out in November 2018, from which they then initiate the fifth wave count from there. And such count leaves us in the midst of a fourth wave correction right now. But here's the thing. I don't agree with this, and I have good cause. You are not going to believe what happened to me at the doctor's office today. I was looking at my chart, and it said that I was difficult. Why would they write that? They've gotten to know you. To begin with, zigzags almost exclusively occur in the second correctional wave. You rarely see such in the fourth wave. And given that we have strong reason to suspect a zigzag in the making right now, we need to re-evaluate the count leading up to it. Now, fourth wave corrections, on the other hand, are commonly known to take on the shape of various triangles. If we instead go on to treat this here as a secular fourth wave triangle, which by the way is perfectly by the book based on its subcount, it doesn't just mean we initiate our secular fifth wave at the end of the triangle, it equally means we initiate our new primary count at the very same place as in our primary five wave impulse within the secular fifth wave. And what we then get is for this correction right now to be the second wave one and not the fourth wave. And this makes ideal sense on many levels. First of all, it validates the zigzag as those are atypical for second wave corrections. Secondly, it perfectly matches the subwave count of the primary first wave. And thirdly, it confirms that this triangle was a long secular fourth wave with its triangular characteristics. Now, some technicians argue that we might in fact be in for a very complex fourth wave count right here. One which, as mentioned at the beginning, could materialize by taking out a new all-time high after which it were to quickly plunge back down. Surely, I don't downplay this scenario in any way, yet neither do I see any reason to overcomplicate things when what we have thus far plays out by the book. For as Frost and Prechter clearly state, we shouldn't overcomplicate things unnecessarily. If there's an obvious count, we have no reason but to follow it until disproven. But brace yourself, for this is where things get spooky. Based on this secular market cycle, once it ends and this secondary fifth wave is over with, we can expect some serious damage to the Bitcoin price. This will be a crash in which I expect Bitcoin to lose up to 95-98% to of its value, something I've been rather vocal about since last year. And this controversial topic we'll discuss at length soon. In fact, for 9 months now I have been working on a groundbreaking episode in which we determine Bitcoin's true value, a baseline question no one has been able to answer satisfactorily thus far, yet a question to which I might just have the answer. Once it's polished enough, I will publish it on this channel, and without spoiling the content, the entire thesis of that episode does go hand in hand with a brutal secondary correction. Now, the major thing that would make me change my mind about this being the actual fourth wave is if the zigzag were to be disqualified again, but this time for real. And especially so if Bitcoin were to establish some sort of a typical fourth wave correctional pattern of the primary impulse. And now I'll repeat that in Greek to make sure that everyone understands it. <laughs> Yet until that, until our zigzag has been disqualified, it stands, and so does this count. Again, these are my own personal thoughts and conclusions. With that said, I will base my entries and exits on them as always, for it worked well when we sold it all at 62 and 58,000, and it worked well when we bought it all back again at 32. That was all for now, thank you and goodbye.